Hello grade 12s. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Veleleni Ngosi. In this lesson, we will be looking at the negative feedback mechanism controlling blood glucose levels. So like every day, all our videos, we show the examination guideline. So this is the guideline. It's for life sciences. We are on endocrine system and homeostasis. So today we will be elaborating on the negative feedback mechanism controlling blood glucose levels. And then I will also explain the disorder caused by the imbalance of blood glucose, which is diabetes meningitis. So this is the content of this video. So make sure you have, you grab this examination guideline since it's the one that is telling us what the examiners want us to know before we sit for a final examination. So without wasting more time, let's get to it. So in negative feedback, first thing that we need to know, we must know homeostasis. So we must know the definition of a homeostasis. So this definitions, I got it from the examination guideline. So it's very safe to use definitions from the guidelines or the CAPS document. So these ones are the more, these ones are the ones that are safe. So homeostasis is the process of maintaining constant internal environment in a narrow limit, despite the changes that takes place internally and externally. So here, this is the definition. So let me make an example where it will clarify these definitions. Like here, I have a graph. These graphs show the body temperature. So our body temperature range around 37.5 degrees Celsius. So if you see here, if the temperature goes down, then it goes back again, goes down and goes back again. So this is what we call the homeostasis. So it takes a narrow limit. So by narrow limits, it means this changes from maximum to minimum. It's very small. Doesn't matter if the changes, it takes place like internally on our body or externally. But to achieve this homeostasis, there is a mechanism that we call it a negative feedback mechanism. Negative feedback mechanism is a regulation mechanism in which a stimulus causes opposite output in order to maintain balance. So for example here, in a negative feedback, we have a stimulant which will cause the imbalance. We have the, re the receptor and then we control center and then the effect. So to explain these parts, the stimulus is the one that causes the imbalance. So if it's like this, this is balance, but immediately if it is diagonal like this one, it's imbalance. So for it to be imbalanced is caused by the stimulus. Receptor is the one that detect the imbalance or detect the changes. And then we have the control center. So control center is the one that will take the response. So it will give the information to the effector what effector must do. So it, it will get the information from the receptor and then interpret it and then it take it to the effector. Then the effect is the one that will reverse this action of the stimulus. So at the end, we ended up with a very narrow changes. So this is the simple example of a negative feedback. So since our video today, it's about controlling blood glucose level. So let's look at that. To control a blood glucose level, we have liver and the pancreas. So pancreas act as a receptor and then it acts as a control center. So it it detects the changes of the sugar level in the blood. Again, it will secrete the hormones that are needed to control these changes. And then we have a liver. So a liver is an effect. What pancreas do, it will transfer this information to the liver and then the liver will take effect to reverse whatever that stimulus has caused. So uh, in short, the pancreas secrete a hormone is either insulin or glucagon, then insulin or glucagon will travel to the liver via blood and then they will make effect in the liver. In the next uh, uh, slide, I will explain what happens. So use this explanation 
to explain during examination. I got this explanation from the previous question paper. So let's say when the glucose level in the blood increases above normal. So this time the blood increases above normal. What happened is the Iceland of Langerhans in the pancreas is stimulated. So Iceland of Langerhans is the part inside the pancreas. So if the glucose level it changes in the blood, the Iceland of Langerhans, it will be stimulated. And then what will it do? It, the, the Iceland of Langerhans respond by secreting insulin into the bloodstream. So insulin is a hormone that is secreted by the pancreas or the Iceland of Langerhans. So this insulin, when it's secreted into the bloodstream, it will travel to the liver. So the insulin is transported to the liver, so which is the effect. So uh, let me explain something that I forgot. The Iceland of Langerhans or the pancreas, it's a sensor. So it sends that there is an imbalanced level of glucose in the blood. Again, the Iceland of Langerhans will respond by secreting insulin. So it's a receptor. Again, it's a control center. And then when it secretes the insulin, the insulin will be transported to the liver. And then what the liver does, though the insulin stimulate the conversion of glucose into glycogen, then it's stored in the liver. So the liver now, it's an effector, it's the one that is taking the action, trying to reverse the changes that causes by the stimulus. So this insulin will convert the glucose since the, the glucose level is high. So the insulin will, revert, will convert the glucose into glycogen, then it is stored in the liver. So glycogen is a storage form of glucose. So if, we want, if our body wants to store a glucose, it converts it into glycogen and then it's stored in the liver. So now since the glucose has been converted, and then it won't be poured into, into the blood. So then the blood glucose will decrease again. Let's say then the glucose level in the blood will decrease because now glucose has been converted into the glycogen and then it is stored in the liver. And then as the blood glucose level decreases and then it returns to normal. So this is how you will explain the negative feedback if there is a, the glucose level in the blood increases above normal. Then next, let's see what happened if the glucose now is low. So when the glucose level in the blood decreases than normal, and then what happened is the Iceland of Langerhan in the pancreas stimulated. So now uh, it's a sensory, it will sense, or it's a receptor, it will sense that the glucose it's very low and then the Icelands of Langerhans respond by secreting glucagon into the blood so now we are no longer secreting insulin now the this part secret a glucagon so a glucagon is another form of hormone that functions opposite to insulin so our body will never secrete insulin and glucagon at the same time because they work different in an opposite direction. So this time the body is secreting glucagon or the pancreas is secreting glucagon into the blood stream. And then the glucagon is transported to the liver. So same as the insulin, now the glucagon is transported to the liver. And then glucagon stimulates the conversion of glycogen into glucose. Then it releases to the bloodstream. So if you remember later, insulin was converting glucose into glycogen. So now glucagon is converting glycogen into glucose and then it releases into the bloodstream. And then after the glycogen is converted into glucose and then released into the bloodstream. And then the glucose level in the blood increases. Since now we have a glucose, then the level of the glucose increases and it returns to normal. So now you see the different. So this is the different. Next up, it's a disorder that caused by maybe imbalanced sugar level. So the disorder caused by the imbalanced sugar level, we call it diabetes 
mellitus. So diabetes mellitus is a group of diseases that result in too much sugar in the blood. So if there is too much sugar in the blood, so that the disease is called diabetes mellitus or a high blood glucose. And then we have two types of diabetes. We have type 1 and then we have type 2. Type 1 diabetes occurs when pancreas stop producing insulin and then people with type 1 must be injected with insulin to survive. Since our body need an insulin so we, 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 we you can't survive without an insulin. So if the pancreas is not producing the insulin and then you have to be injected with um, insulin to survive. So you need insulin. And then we have type 2 diabetes. So type 2 diabetes okay when the body produces an insulin that is not enough or the one that is not working proper. So this one is not as dangerous as this one because the body it produces an insulin. It's just that sometimes the insulin is not enough or the one that is producing is not working properly. So this one it might cause by a lack of exercise. It might cause this type 2 diabetes. So some of the symptoms are glucose in the urine. So if you are maybe a glucose is found in the urine, you might be diabetic. And then a blur vision. So if your vision is not clear, then you must you may be diabetic. And then non-healing wounds. If you've got the wounds that doesn't heal or does not heal, you might be diabetic. And then a frequent urination. Someone who urinates frequently. So they might be diabetic. So this is the disorder that is caused by the imbalanced sugar level. So this is the end of this video. If you have watched it to this far, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you are studying, good luck with your studies. God bless you. Thank you very much.